Welcome back, everybody. Woo! Look at that. That is pretty. Welcome back to another Stig shift. I'm going to do something really unusual in a very long video. We'll try to condense a whole four day week in one video. Let's see how that goes. Have some fun. Hey, check it out. Look what came in. <laughs> the former all Italia, but I still, that's what I call it. Anyway, my point is that they really painted this aircraft really nice colors and nice accents there. This is an A350-900. And trust me, it really stands out when it rolls through the airport. It's very nice. We get a lot of these pretty birds coming through LAX. Our first office of the day, a beautiful, beautiful 777-300 rolling in. She just came in from Heathrow, if I can remember correctly. It's a beautiful aircraft. You know, the beauty of this aircraft does not actually lie in its uh, aesthetics. It actually lies within its infrastructure, the way its systems work, the way it's designed, because this aircraft was actually designed by mechanics and by engineers combined together. It's a perfect harmony of engineering. Sadly, Boeing has literally not created an aircraft even to come close to this. You want to compare even the latest variations of the 787 or even the 747-8. It does not even come close to the architecture of this beautiful machine. You know why I say this? Go ahead and look up Arink 629. You'll understand. Yeah. All right, let's go. First office. He's a beauty. This came in. You gotta give it a little bit of oil. Do a quick little walk around, and I think they're gonna reposition this to gate 41 or 43. We'll see. We'll see what happens. A little GE90 love for you. Look at that. Still cold. That fuel is still cold. So what you're seeing there is basically ice buildup on the bottom of the wing. Very cold fuel within the aircraft wing tank, which has been very, very cold because of the altitude it flies in. Once the aircraft lands, you get that condensation buildup on the outside of the wing. And then after a while, it starts dripping down on your head while you're doing your walk around. Yes, that's probably dripping down on my head. Yay! There you go. Let's give it some oil. I'm sure you guys have seen this a million times at this point. You're like, Stig, stop showing you servicing oil. It's not interesting anymore. <laughs> Woo! You know, I show a lot of the same stuff all the time because the, the job sometimes is repetitive. You get to do the same things all the time. Now, that doesn't mean it's boring. I still enjoy it. You might not enjoy it, but I'm just trying to show you uh, daily activities. But here and there, I drop a little bit of nuggets of knowledge or information. But majority of aircraft maintenance, especially on the line, is basically repetitive maintenance. You're doing the same stuff all the time, but then again, it's always unpredictable. You don't know what you might encounter. There you go. Get our pump. Put oil in, engine will be happy. Doing some nav data upload. A bit of context here. Okay, so aircraft have navigational data that it's uploaded to the aircraft. Maintenance does this. We do this pretty much once a month. We update the navigational data to the aircraft so the pilots can use the proper information. The aircraft usually has about two months of navigational data. One for the initial month and one for the next month. But once the initial month goes by, we update it for the next month after that. So it's constantly being updated.
it's it's hilarious that this thing still runs on Windows XP though. This is where everybody likes to panic. Oh my God, a multi-million dollar airplane running on a Windows XP program. Guys, relax, seriously, relax. You know why we run at Windows XP on this airplane? Because it's reliable. It's literally a flawless system. All the bugs and kinks have been completely wiped out. That operating system is one of the best operating systems in the world. Now, I'm gonna get comments from Linux users. I'm just joking, but I'm serious, guys. Windows XP was literally the best operating system in the world. It was flawless. And the fact of the matter that the aircraft can utilize this as a interface or it, it just basically runs programs. There's sub programs that it just runs. That's all it does. And for any of you techies out there or IT guys that are trying to go, oh my God, it's gonna be hackable. This uh, Guys, it's a closed system. It does not talk. There's no internet on that. It's literally based on a, uh, a just for the aircraft, it's called a MAT, Maintenance Access Terminal. It only talks to us. It's whatever we interface with it. That's it. It does not talk to the outside world unless we let it talk to the outside world. This is why we are updating it, but it does not talk to do, to the internet and whatnot. So anyway, move along. I know. <laughs> hey, if it works, it works. Alright, this thing is called the MAT, Maintenance Access Terminal. This is how we do our operational checks on the 777. There you go. Well, it so happened that they needed the gate space. We needed the brake ride and get this aircraft off the gate. So me and my partner, we sat down, got everything ready and get all the clearances and basically sat around on the flight deck, making sure everything's okay. But the view is always beautiful. We always enjoy this. Don't get me wrong. We also get to taxi these airplanes. This is just a pushback. I get lots of interesting comments saying, oh, are you allowed to actually drive the aircraft? Yeah, absolutely. We get to drive these airplanes all around. We get to taxi them back and forth from the gate to the hangar. We also get to do high power runs. But regardless of all that, it's, it's all fun. Obviously, we get qualified for all of this. So lots of training and lots of reoccurring training. As I said before, it's probably the best part of the job. Driving multi-million dollar equipment. Yes, absolutely. I'll take it any day, every day over a cubicle. Okay, reposition completed. We're gonna walk around, but I gotta go back to the international. I completely forgot. I left my vehicle way over there. <laughs> I gotta go walk. It's all right, I'll get my steps in. That was beautiful. Look at that. There you go, take a picture. Seriously, take a picture. You don't get to see this kind of stuff every day. It's a beautiful sight when it comes to this. I mean, I love it. Take a screenshot. The day goes by, the sun comes down, and we keep on working. That's just the way it is. Check it out. It's pretty cool. The One World airplane. And right next door is actually even cooler. Look what they got here. <laughs> biofuel. Okay guys, so biofuel. This is a really interesting one. Look, I'm no chemist and I really don't know the inner workings of all of that. This is beyond my pay grade. But from what I understand is that it is a more efficient way of burning fuel that does not cause uh, harmful effects to the environment. I can read all I want. I can just see whatever it, that you see that's on the internet. We all have the same data. It's a mixture between Jet A and other formulas of fuel. It varies between airlines and airlines. I Trust me, I wish I knew how that works, but I really don't. 
Uh, sorry, but apparently it's more efficient or something. I, oh, okay, next. It's actually pretty livery. Very nice. On to the next one. Yeah, they got towed in onto this gate. They can't taxi into this one. There's too much obstruction in the back. You got service roads, you got all sorts of things over there. You'll, you'll get too much jet blast, dangerous. So usually the airplane will park over there and they'll hook up right there and they'll, they'll bring it in. Here we have a beautiful 321neo right here. Just doing a standard walk around and making sure everything's okay. Here's a nice little look for you to the external power receptacle. This is where the power cord gets hooked up. I don't remember if I mentioned it before, but aircraft run on 115 VAC and 400 Hertz. You have a variety of buttons right there. Ground crew can press uh, one of those buttons and actually uh, a bell will go off in the flight deck to notify to, or to get the attention of the people on the flight deck. You also have a guarded red switch right there. That's to shut down the APU just in case there's a fire. Also a variety of lights or indicators notifying that there's power available or the aircraft is receiving power and obviously the interphone jack. Slightly aft of that panel, you see that little white circle right there? That's actually for a jack pad. When we jack the aircraft up, there's a special pad that gets placed in there and the massive jack will apply to the pad and we can lift the nose of the aircraft. There's two other pads or section pads for the wings as well and one on a tail. Yeah, uh, ULEDs look really, really pretty. Here comes the comment. Oh, look at the airplane peeing. No, it's not peeing. Uh, that is a drain mask, ladies and gentlemen. So the water that you use in the lavatories, uh, the, the water that goes down the sink, goes overboard. Also the water that's in the galleys. The reason it says hot, because in flight, that unit is heated. Remember, you're flying at cruise altitude of about 30,000 feet or whatnot. It's ice cold up there, so they need that unit to be heated so it doesn't freeze up, the water doesn't freeze up. Pretty much most aircraft are like this. There's multiple drain masks all across the aircraft, some designated for the forward and some for the aft. Now the one aircraft that actually doesn't have a drain mask for this particular system, it is the 787. The 787 does not have uh, drain masts. It collects its own gray water. I believe I read somewhere it's because of the fuselage, because it's composite fuselage, and obviously having more holes in the fuselage is not good. But uh, let me know if you guys know more about that. The CFM Leap 1A, I think this thing is just incredible. It's just beautiful, the design of it. The fan blades alone are just a work of art. Composite material, 18 fan blades, wide cord are made out of 3D woven composite material. What's even cooler is that the leading edge and the trailing edge are titanium. The black that you see there is actually paint. They call it uh, black painting beige uh, primer and polyurethane coating. And if I remember correctly, I think they weigh about 12.5 uh, pounds or so. A quick look at the brakes and tires, making sure everything's okay. That little unit right there that you're looking at, the cylindrical thing that's a shimmy dampener dampens the vibration of the main wheels on taxi takeoff landing oh, of course we got to give it a little love oh we send it out with love as we walk around we go to the other engine and you know i'm gonna go back to saying another thing about this engine it's pretty cool okay time to time we do blade lubes and sometimes we replace blades because of damage or whatnot. But there's a very special marking right here. You see that little dimple? That's for us to designate which is the number one blade. Installation of blades have to go in a very particular order because these blades are balanced. 
when we remove them, we have to replace them exactly where they were before. And that little marking shows us where to begin, designating the number one blade. So you start taking them out, and then when we're done doing our maintenance, we put them back in in the same order. Pretty much all engines have this. Sometimes it's on the hub right there, and sometimes it's underneath the spinner. But there's always a number one blade mark. Alrighty. Let's see now. Get this back. We'll take the logbook. We'll input the oil information. And this one actually stays here overnight. So let's print out the post flight. It's always a good habit to print the post flight. There you go. There you go. Some Christmas trees for you. Have I ever showed you guys how Airbus does this little unique thing that they put their logo uh, inside the flight deck of the 320 family? They do it on the knobs. Uh, this one is for this light right here. But that's their logo. There's six of them. One. Uh, where's the other one? Two. That's for these. Three. Right there. That's for the integral lighting. Four. That's for those right there. Let's see now. And this one right there. Five. That's for these again. And obviously this one. But yeah, I thought it would be pretty cool. I like it. I like their logo. It's pretty nice. Airbus, send me a sticker or something. Let's see now. A little bit more information. Most of you probably already know this. Uh, black circuit breakers and green circuit breakers. Okay, so the difference. Why are they colored in Airbus? Different colors. So one is monitored by ECAM. That's the ECAM. The black ones are not monitored. The green ones are continuously monitored. Pretty simple. Okay, a little more context to this. I know I use a lot of acronyms. Acronyms is the world of aviation. ECAM stands for Electronic Centralized Aircraft Monitor. It's basically the Airbus version of the ICUS. ICUS is for Boeing. Engine Indicating and Crew Alerting System. Also some more information on the circuit breakers themselves. These are thermal style circuit breakers. And the sole purpose of the circuit breaker is for protection of the wiring. That's it. That is a circuit breaker's job. If wiring gets overloaded with too much amperage, it will pop the breaker to protect the wire. And the little numbers on the circuit breaker is the amperage rating of that circuit breaker. Now, if you want to talk about really cool futuristic stuff, we can take a look at the 787 later on, and uh, I'll make a video about this separately. Uh, those have virtual circuit breakers, which work off of solid state relays. Very cool technology. And let's see now. The blue ones, I guess this might be different for different airlines. Uh, these, are, these are deactivated. And these are so pilots don't play with them. <laughs> pilots do not play with these circuit breakers. Bad things will happen. Only maintenance gets to touch these. Okay, those red breakers are very important. And the reason why we block them out is so pilots do not inadvertently pull those breakers. See where it's written right there? WTB? That stands for wing tip brake. This controls a shaft on an outer wing area of an Airbus. This prevents uneven extension of the slat and flaps. So if those things get pulled, basically the flaps get stuck in one position and it's irreversible. It has to land with extended flaps and maintenance has to reset it. So yeah, don't touch. <laughs> oh yeah. That right there is a guidance system. It's basically almost works like a little radar. It picks up the signature of the aircraft and guides the airplane in. Most modern airports have this. It's just more efficient way of getting airplanes into the gate. Now that doesn't mean you have less manpower. Trust me, there's still somebody at the terminal control. Just in case it fails, they can hit the stop switch. And here we go. Last flight of the day, guys. We'll end it on a 737. Come on in, beautiful.
Alrighty guys, nice easy day, nothing too crazy, I had some fun, but don't worry, you're going to have a lot more fun this week, be here for the next four days, Woo! alright, I'll see you guys tomorrow, later! Day one comes to an end, day two starting out, let's go! Welcome back everybody, another glorious day, let's go! Go get the cargo pits open on that one. Oh, and happy Thanksgiving to whoever celebrates it. Let's go have some fun. It so happened to be uh, Thanksgiving weekend, but that's how airport life works. That's how aviation life works. We work weekends, we work holidays, we work day shift, swing shift, night shift. These airplanes don't care. For them, it's just another day. Just like for us, it's just another day. I'll probably be working on Christmas and New Year's. People always ask me, oh, Stig, how, how do you do that? What about your family and your friends? That's the sacrifice. That truly is part of the big sacrifice you make when you get into this industry. I have probably lost countless amount of friends and relationships because of this. But you know, you have to be dedicated to your craft. You truly have to have a love and passion for aviation. It gives, but it also takes. As I said, it's just another day for me. When New Year's comes around, I always make a comical joke of, just one more time around the sun, it is what it is. But that does not stop me from having fun, enjoying and learning. But anyway, besides that part, this is an ETOPS check and we're doing a inspection on a cargo pit. Get to drive up to it, pull a lever over there that unlatches the locks and then it electrically opens via a little switch right there I press. This is the aft cargo of the 777 and the system works electrically on this one. If you compare it to, let's say the 787 or the, even the Airbus, those work hydraulically. This one uses electric motors and it has a torque tube, as you can see right there up top, spinning around. It turns a transmission and opens the door. And before somebody comments, oh, you can't be showing this, this, and that, dude, relax. The instructions are literally written on the door. And a simple Google search will probably give you a lot more information than I'm telling you here. Anyway, let's go inside and check it out. All right. Wave hi, Joe. <laughs> uh, what's this? There you go. <laughs> it was just loose. After we got done with the 777, on to the next office. Here comes a lovely 321. We were fortunate. It was really nice weather and uh, always nice sunsets in LA. Let's enjoy the sound of the beautiful engine. Okay, we just got done oiling this one. It's good to go. Believe it or not, today's schedule is a little bit odd because obviously it's Thanksgiving Day, but most of the time what happens is early flights come in and they terminate because the majority of the airplanes are out flying. Like yesterday or yesterday morning was the busy times, but now it's kind of dead. Everything's coming in and settling down. Oh yeah, anyway. Most of these airplanes are just gonna sit overnight and get some maintenance done on them. Let's see. Oh, uh, here's a fun one for you. Everybody always wonders on, uh, this is a V2500 engine. Everybody always wonders uh, what that little probe is. Well, that is called the P2T2 sensor. Uh, all it does is basically uh, monitors inlet pressure and inlet temperature. That's what that's for. Oh yeah, this one's good. On to the next one. We just got to make sure to put the oils in the logbook, but they are going to move this airplane off the gate, so might as well put the power back on. There you go. Empty airplane. <laughs> All right, let's get this. Next office.
Oh, by the way, guys, uh, I've been listening to you. I know a lot of people have been uh, voicing their concern and saying, Stig, can you please shoot uh, horizontally and not vertically? I have been trying to do my best. And I know sometimes I just, it's more comfortable to hold the phone vertically, but I am trying. All right, we're back to the 777. This is going to be a flight to Sydney. So as always, ETOPS. I think they said they had a clogged drain or something like that. Clog sink. Let's go investigate. Before I even got up there, it looked like my work partners have already been addressing the situation. The clog was due to more coffee grounds. I think you guys saw this in the last video. We simply pulled a strainer, cleaned it out. It was good to go. Not a big issue. It happens time to time. The rest of it went smoothly. So I went downstairs to complete the ETOPS. Well, it looks like the other guys are gonna handle the upstairs. I got the downstairs once again. Back into the cargo pits for Stig. <laughs> ah, it's all right. It's all good. Yeah, let's do the usual walk around, make sure everything's okay. Make sure nothing's out of, make sure nothing's out of place like this. <laughs> all right, so the little clips came out. Not a big deal. See, they, they're like little button clips like this. Just re-secure. But you know, since this is open, take the opportunity. Let's check it out. This is the fire extinguishing bottles. Check it out. That's what they look like. Look at that. Right down at the bottom, you got the squibs. There you go. Here's a better look for you. So inside here, I believe it's uh, Halon 1301, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's what they use. All right, some information. There's fire bottles for engines and cargo in the forward cargo. They do contain a Halon and they are pressurized with nitrogen. In case there was an overheat detection within the engine, the flight deck will be notified with a bunch of fun bells and whistles. Pilots can pull the T-handle and extinguish the engine. And these are the main hoses that are coming off of the bottle right there, if you can see it. Where is it? Right here. There's a squib inside here. Basically, it's like a little tiny shotgun shell. That's, that's how they best explain it. It's basically a little miniature explosive device. Inside of there, there is a, a breakable disc when there's a fire and the fire detector is up there, or the smoke detector is Detect it, they'll get a announcement in the flight deck and pilots have the capability of blowing the bottles, which activates this, blows the squib, ruptures the discs inside and lets the fluid out of this into wherever it's going, cargo or engine. As I said earlier, there's separate bottles for the engines and separate bottles for the cargo pit itself. That's why I pointed up to the smoke detector inside the cargo pit. Those will also notify the pilots if there's a uh, smoke inside the cargo pit. And, you know, if there was a fire, they can extinguish it. It's for forward and aft. But a nice little look at the cavity of where they live. Uh, all the silver stuff that you see is uh, insulation. And just a bunch of ducting for air and also water pipes. But anyway, yeah, this happens time to time. Uh, we'll just button this up. No problem at all. Pilots, they have things that stick out. And it'll come across and it'll catch... It'll catch this and it'll kind of like pop it open, but no big deal. Easy fix. Anyway, I won't bore you with the rest of this. There you go. Good as new. Now, if you're going to ask why Boeing does soft cloth material for their sidewalls and their ceiling panels, I don't know. Boeing, that's how they do things. That's, that's how it is. That's why somebody always, there's somebody had asked, why is the roof so wrinkly? It's not, it's just because of the material. It's, it's made up. In Airbus, it's a little different. They have solid wall panels and ceiling panels. In Boeing, it's a little different. Obviously, you got panels over here that are solid, but I guess the difference of design or uh, for, light, for having the aircraft being more lightweight, maybe. Beyond my pay grade, talk to engineering. I just fixed this thing. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. All right, my friends. ETOPS is completed. This beauty is ready to fly.
And this is actually the last flight of the night. All we gotta do is just kind of stand by, sit around, and make sure they don't, they don't get any gate calls. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Hope you guys all have fun. Enjoyed your day. Oh yeah, before we go, we make sure the fidget spinner is working. <laughs> I've been promising. You guys have been calling me out on that one. But anyway, hope you guys had fun. Thank you all for sticking around. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Later. On to the next day. On to more adventure and more fun. First flight of the day. And we watch this beauty roll in. You know, the airport is a fascinating place. It's a living, breathing thing. Almost like a ballet of metal moving around constantly. And then you have us walking around on the ground doing our work. You see, most people don't even know we exist. Most people think these airplanes magically just work. They tend to forget that, yeah, it's a machine and it needs people to fix it. Same thing for cargo. Those bags don't get loaded by themselves. You have hardworking ramp crew doing their job, along with everybody else on the airport. Catering, tower, operations, all sorts of fun stuff. A lot of moving pieces and a lot of different people making these aircraft move. People that you won't ever see, won't ever talk to. But if you happen to fly and you're sitting next to a window, don't be shy. Give us a wave. We like it. Sometimes some days are easy. That should just needs a little bit. Let it cool down, then we'll oil it. Alrighty, everything looking good. Go check it out. Put the oils in the book. Let's see. Huh. It's always a weird configuration when they have the um, L2 and the R2 door like this because it's it looks a little goofy like this. It, it, it looks like it's blocking it, but it's actually not blocking it because it's plenty of room to walk through. It's just the way the seats are configured. It's <laughs> I think I've shown this before. Huh, but uh, since we're here, this is a kind of cool thing that they do. It's, it's a safety feature. Look, you can't drop these tray tables, you know, like this one, right? It's because you don't want any obstructions. You don't want this tray table dropping down as you're escaping. So in case you bump into it and you know, go like this, you don't want to block other people. So yeah, just an easy little safety feature. Cool, huh? And if you're wondering, you know, if these people are don't have any tray tables, they do. It's actually inside the armrest. It's right here. See? Voila. Matter of fact, I thought this thing was flying away, but it's not. It's actually getting moved. It's going the Terminator. It stays here. Oh, I thought it was gonna be a turn. Oh well. Schedules change consistently. Aircraft get swapped. Some airplanes you think are gonna fly out, don't fly out, they have to stay overnight. They get replaced with other aircraft. So we're constantly on our toes when it comes to this. You could have a change of schedule at a moment's notice. So we're consistently keeping track of this because we have uh, information on our iPads. We're also communicating with our crew chiefs as well as the supervisors, taking a look at the routing, where the airplane has been, where it's going. All of this is happening at a constant pace all the time. The logistics alone to get an airplane flying is just mind blowing. But you as a passenger don't experience that. You don't see it. You get on board, you sit down and that's it. But for us, it's a different world. So I was basically pretty much done with this one, but then I was just looking around the flight deck and I noticed something. Do you see it? Do you see what's missing? Whoop. <laughs> okay, so there's a little clip, or not a clip, a little gap that's here. That's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to actually have one of these in there. It must have fell off. Well, the good news is majority of all these components are modular. So watch, it's a turn of a screw, pops out, let's find it. Let's see now. All right, let's see. Got I got it. There it is, see, just like this one. Sometimes they fall off, but not a big deal. We'll put that right here. But yeah, it's a good little showcase of how most of these components are modular. So just one can of plug. 
Most of them have either one or two cannon plugs attached, so you can pretty much change any of these components out. Uh, even the ones up top over here. It's a simple couple of screws like that. Comes right out. Then you change the component. Or you can do, you know, change out individual components as well behind it. But yeah. Anyway, let's put this thing back. There you go. Good as new. Now we'll just put this back. Since I didn't actually disturb any components here, no operational check is needed, but even if you do want it, it's just a flood panel light. See? But I didn't take any uh I didn't take any cannon plugs off. Just uh, took it off just to reinstall the other thing. There you go, secure, easy. Alrighty, on to the next one. Yeah, modular parts are fantastic. It makes our life so much easier. Quick replacement of LRUs, line replaceable units, uh, becomes a cinch. Aircraft manufacturers do this to help us as maintenance, obviously. But not all components are very easily accessible. There are things that sometimes engineering uh, over engineers or they put them in places where it's just unaccessible. That's where you have to start thinking outside the box. All right, guys. That was a nice short day. Not very eventful. Time to go home. Hope you guys had fun. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Later. Welcome back everybody Another beautiful day You know what's something cool these big massive tugs These tires on these tugs are actually bigger than an aircraft tire This thing literally stands up to my chin Here's a comparison this one's up to my waist Yeah, that's a big old tug tire All right so my partner's gonna be doing the exterior. We're going upstairs. Let's go. As you can imagine, there's a lot of walking and climbing stairs involved. I definitely get my steps in for the day. Not to mention I carry a tool pouch with me and that thing almost weighs 20 pounds. Most of the guys in the shop think I'm crazy. <laughs> okay. Let's see what we got here. Actually, it's a clean bird. All oh, hydraulics are good. Oxygen is good. No faults, no status messages. It's engine oil quantities, good. Let's go through the parameters, through maintenance info display. And just basically check the brakes, tires, check the condition of the IDGs and the backup generators. All sorts of fun stuff. One interesting thing with the 777, they have a very special ATA chapter, which is maintenance tasks. This is where you go to find any kind of latched fault. So if the airplane is holding on to a hard fault, usually it'll be right here. You wanna hear uh, something silly? Uh, actually, it's not something silly. I mean, it is, I guess. It is for me. The way they push buttons on, uh, on Boeing's, uh, the way they're designed. Look at this. It, it's kind of comical. Watch this. <laughs> it's a clever little design. Pretty cool, huh? This is for the display control. You can go into alternate mode, but look at that. That's pretty cool. It's a clever little engineering there. <laughs> I swear, sometimes I feel like a little kid. It's these little details, the little small things that make me smile. <laughs> Do a nice little walk through the cabin, make sure everything is in order. Everything's functional. Yeah, of course, my favorite. My favorite. Oh, at least it wasn't stuck that bad. I wish somebody would write instructions on these. I wish somebody would write instructions on these. These handsets are my pet peeve. Oh my goodness. I can't stand when they're put back in properly. It damages them. All right, we're pretty much done over here, but let's ask you a question. I haven't asked a question in a while. This is a 777. And let's look up on the overhead on the engine start ignition knobs and this is my question to you this engine is capable of auto start then you can put it to start but this is my question tell me what con means 
right there. C-O-N. Tell me what it means and what it does. There you go. Have fun. Hope you guys enjoyed the trivia question. Try to find the answer. Once again, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Guys, this is commercial aviation. None of these things are secrets. It takes initiative and a just a little bit of digging on Google. And I guarantee you, you'll find so much information. I have uh, seen comments uh, that are kind of just weird and saying, you can't be showing this and you can't be showing that. Why? You, you can literally find these answers yourself. You can research all of this. These things are public knowledge. You can dig into so many forums and databases. It's crazy. Heck, even some manufacturers give you the information freely. So I highly encourage you to check things out, go read. You will be surprised on how much information is out there just for you. All it takes is just an inquisitive mind and a little bit of patience. And trust me, you'll find the answers. And I'm here just to fill in the gaps and give you the details. There you go. What's this? Oh, buddy. You're in enemy territory. This ain't where you're supposed to be. Nope. You know, FOD is a very serious thing on the airport. FOD is foreign object debris. It's basically anything lying around on a ramp or taxiways or runways, obviously. Ramp personnel and maintenance, when we are working on the apron or the ramp area, uh, Anything we see on the ground, we try to pick up. We don't want anything to get ingested by these engines or get ran over, causing a puncture or damage. So we're all very diligent when we're walking around. We try to pay attention on our surroundings. But sometimes we find little comical things all around the ramp. That one was hilarious. A Delta uh, pin. I ended up keeping that one. That was a nice little souvenir. Not matching the colors. Should I? No, I'll keep it. This looks actually kind of cool. Let's go check this puppy out. Alrighty. Here's our final bird. Lovely 787. Gotta get this one ready. You're gonna go out to Haneda later tonight. As you can see, we have lots of international flights that go out. Fly out to London, Sydney. This one's going to Haneda. What you're seeing there, that's the exhaust port of the 787 air conditioning system or the pack. I just did a video on air conditioning system and pressurization. Hope you guys enjoy that one. But the cool portion on this one is, uh, I think I mentioned it in that other video, the air conditioning system or the packs on the 787 are electric. They run on the cabin air compressors. Pretty cool technology. This is the GENX engine. There's two variants of them. This one is very particular for the 787. GENX-1B. The other variant is equipped on the 747-8. That one's called the GENX-2B. They both share a common core. The 1B engine fan is about 111 inches in diameter and produces about 70,000 pounds of thrust. The 2B fan is 104 inches in diameter and produces about 67,000 pounds of thrust. Sesame. Don't mind me, I'm just being a goofball and talking to myself. <laughs> uh, the 787 cargo door actuation, this is actually pretty cool. So unlike the 777, this one is actually hydraulic. 
But the most interesting thing that it's is its own independent system. It's got its own hydraulic reservoir. It's got its own actuation system. It does not tie into the rest of the aircraft hydraulics, which I personally think is a great design. That's actually really wonderful they did this. All right, y'all. That's it. End of the line, boys and girls. Hope you all had a good time. I hope you guys learned a few things. And that's it. This is my last flight. I will see you guys on the next adventure. Take care. Later. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it was a very long video. Uh, four days of work and lots of fun. Lots of things you got to see. Thank you for watching. I appreciate every single one of you being here. And I'll catch you on the next adventure.